guys, thank you so much for watching today. We are back in Planet Zoo with another habitat speed build, and this time we are building for the Southern White Rhino. Now, we are back actually in Socorro Zoo, which is a fairly old project. I've been working on this one for quite a while, but if you do remember, Socorro Zoo was actually the zoo that I lost due to crashing issues a while ago, and I actually haven't had access to it in a few months, I feel like, um, since, well, I guess it's only been a couple months because this is the Southern White Rhino Habitat, and I did all of this building before I lost it to crashes, um, so it had to have been after the Africa Pack actually came out. So a couple months that I've not had access to this park and you know I reached out to Frontier to see if they could help me. I have no idea what the crashes were being caused by or anything like that. All I know is that uh, at one point I tried opening up the zoo and it would load for a couple minutes and then just completely crash back to my desktop. The, the total game would crash. Um, so it's really unfortunate. I, I wasn't quite sure what to do and I was really bummed because Socorro Zoo was the one project that I did actually want to keep. I wanted to keep working on it. At the time we had Hakea Wildlife Park and River Rock Zoo going and I wanted to wrap those two up and keep going with only Socorro Zoo and our franchise series. So it was kind of a huge bummer that Socorro is the one that was having crashing problems and that I lost access to. Um, so I'm very excited that it's back and very fortunate because I actually found out that it's back because I was going through my zoo save files and kind of cleaning out some of the autosave files and, and things like that and kind of just looking at what other files that I have because I have a few files that I've started to build in but never really finished because I wasn't super happy with them. Um, and I just decided to try one more time. I just thought to myself, like, what if it loads? And lo and behold, it loaded and it worked. So that's kind of how we got it back. So very excited about that. Very excited to be back in here. As I mentioned, all the footage that you're watching right now was actually recorded before the crashes and a few months ago, right after the Africa pack came out. And we actually recorded this on stream, on a, on a live stream. So that's what you're watching now. We're working on the guest viewing area here with just a very simple fence um, with a little bit of a planter in between before getting to a dry moat and then into the habitat. We are working off of a reference picture. It's a very simple reference picture, essentially of just what looks like a small town, uh, small town zoo set in like a temperate setting, which is exactly what Socorro is. And I really wanted to keep this habitat simple, but also interesting. And that's kind of a hard combination. And when it comes to Southern White Rhino habitats, it's a little bit difficult because the rhinos can be so destructive. So when you're adding things into the habitat, you really have to keep in mind that they're not going to have a whole lot of trees. It's not going to be like a super lush overgrown habitat because the rhinos would likely just either stomp all that down if it was ground cover or eat it or, you know, r rub on it and destroy it like trees and things like that. So I really had to pay attention to the little details that weren't trees that weren't foliage. So uh, one example would be this little wall that we're working on right here, kind of making this, this more interesting retaining wall to kind of hold back the terrain where the rhinos are going to be. Instead of just doing like a plain concrete wall or something like that, I decided to use these little aquatic rocks uh, because they look like little bricks. And then you can see me going through here and actually changing the color very slightly of a few of them uh, to make it look a little bit more varied, a little bit more maybe weathered, like some of the bricks are going to be a little worn or a little uh, sun bleached or, you know, they're just not all the same color because, you know, even though they're the same stone, they come from different parts of the stone, however you want to justify it, but just kind of making it look a little bit less tiled and a little bit less repetitive, which can oftentimes happen when you're building with the pieces in Planet Zoo because they don't have different patterns. Like the, if you're using the same side of one piece over and over and over again, you're gonna be able to really identify the fact that it's just a copy and pasted piece over and over and over because the patterning is the same. 
I'm not sure if that quite makes sense without actually showing you piece by piece, but I hope it makes some sort of sense. <laughs> the other thing that I really wanted to do with this habitat is give it a more interesting background. So thinking about the fact that we can't really have a whole lot in the habitat itself, but we can give it a nice and pretty background. So the first thing that I wanted to do was create an implied, of course, because we all know how much I dislike doing interiors, an implied uh, backstage area. So this is the building that we came up with. It's very kind of utilitarian, obviously lots of, of concrete, um, very simple, but I tried to pay attention to a few of the little details like giving it a, a different depth at some point so you can see where those two openings are, are going to be like the sliding doors for like the roll up doors, like the rhinos would actually come in and out, but then bringing it forward on either side and even doing a little bit of a, um, a sticky outy piece, I guess. Is that, is that the proper language? A sticky outy piece on the right hand side that has a different roof. So it's a flat roof um, to just give it a little bit of depth and a little bit of dimension. So even though it's all concrete, trying to add some interest to it that way. We also end up adding some like um, skylights on the main area. We end up adding some air conditioning units and things. Uh, those pieces I got off the workshop, those are the only things that I did not build in this habitat. So if you wanna download them, you are more than welcome to. They're fabulous pieces and I'm sure as soon as I use them, you're gonna recognize them because they've been used all over the place because they're just that amazing. Um, but using that and then gutters as far as like making like some detail on the building because it is a fairly plain building. Um, I'm very happy with how it comes out. I, I feel like we really achieved the look we were going for in that we wanted it to be plain, quote unquote, realistic, but also not boring, right? I wanted it to be something that, that looked nice as a backdrop for the habitat. The other thing that we do for the backdrop of the habitat is lots of trees. You all know how much I love foliage and building a very plain, not very foliaged, uh, if that's even a word, uh, habitat is really difficult for me. So I usually, if that's the case, I usually take the foliage and put it right outside the back of the habitat because it gives us a nice green, a nice pretty backdrop uh, to kind of set the stage uh, for the habitat and kind of makes it look like it fits more into the zoo. So rather than just looking at that vast expanse of, of just flat space that is a Planet Zoo map before you do anything to it, giving it some, some variation, some trees. Um, I do end up, as I'm doing uh, here, uh, changing out the wall. So I didn't want to do concrete pieces because I completely forgot that the mud wall pieces exist. And somebody pointed out to me in stream that the mud wall is recolorable and I have such a hard time sometimes remembering that I need to think about pieces as not just what they are, uh, but that they can be flipped, they can be turned, some that can be recolored. Um, thinking about things like if the game says this is a wall, thinking about it as a floor or as a roof or something like that, um, I still have a very hard time with that. And that's one of the things with Planet Zoo and even Planet Coaster, I guess just the planet games in general, is you've really got to take the piece and see it for what it looks like and not what the game says it is. Um, this is not a super good example because I'm using the mud wall as a mud wall, but it's just me explaining that I oftentimes forget because the default color for the mud wall is that orange with the pattern on it. And I look at it and I'm like, man, that doesn't match my habitat. I don't want to use that. And then when somebody points out, you know, hey, by the way, it's recolorable. And if you recolor it all the same, you actually get rid of that pattern altogether. And you can see we have what looks like a concrete or plaster wall, but it's just got some of that texture to it, uh, which is exactly what I wanted. So I, I love doing things on stream like that because you guys point out things uh, uh, to me like that, that really help my building. Um, so yeah, so I'm very happy with how that came out. We're gonna add a couple very, very, and I mean, when I say simple, like probably the easiest little shelters that you could ever build. Um, thinking about this as that the rhinos would probably come inside at night or during bad weather or 
I mean, maybe even not because they are outside animals and you know, it does rain where they come from. So they're not gonna melt. They're gonna be just fine in the rain, but giving them a little bit of shade from the sun um, just while they're out on exhibit really was the only goal. And then adding a few more little planter areas, um, you know, again, with the backdrop behind outside the habitat, really trying to bring some of that foliage inside but in a way where it might be protected from the rhinos so a little bit of uh, raised planters here and there to kind of add some greenery just to break up all that gray and you can see even now I've placed down what two or three trees I cannot go very long without placing down the trees I just I really can't I feel like foliage just brings everything together and uh, and I hate everything I build until I add trees I say it over and over again because because it's absolutely true. And now we're just gonna go ahead and build them a little water area. So Southern white rhinos aren't gonna be swimming, but we use the plaster here to make it probably only like ankle deep for them. So if they really wanted to, they could go in and, and lay down and wallow in the water. We completely use the plaster to make it look like it's a concreted um, water area so you can see this little slope is where they can walk in and I do that all the way around and then add some rocks to make it look like it's really kind of built into the habitat so it is a man-made water area obviously because of all the plaster but using like the natural rocks all the way around to make it look like the zoo uh, attempted to kind of blend it in like like you're trying to tell the guests that it's it's really not you know that man-made that it's like a natural water area but it's not because where the guests are sitting or where the guests are standing they kind of it's raised above so they're not looking down on it they're really looking at all these rocks that we're placing down in front um, I do end up using the natural rocks for this one. Um, I mix in some of the aquatic rocks here and there, but I really, I don't know. I just, for this one, I was kind of feeling more of the natural look and I do really like the textures in the, uh, in the natural rocks in game. Obviously we still use a couple of the aquatic rocks and I try to match their color as best as possible just cause I love those little gravelly pieces for like little rocks that are around the edges of the big rocks. Um, but I, I don't know, I'm loving mixing the aquatic rocks and the natural rocks just for that variation in texture even more so because I found that with the aquatic rocks, there's not that many of them. Um, so I, I tend to struggle with repeating patterns with them as well. And then if we mix in the natural rocks, it really gives a good variation of texture and I love the outcome and the look of it. Um, but I do want to apologize for the lack of content last week and really the beginning of this week. Um, for those of you that weren't on my live stream on Sunday, I have been pretty sick. I got I got sick starting on Thursday last week and I felt kind of miserable all weekend long. Um, and so I'm still really not feeling that great. So if the voiceover is a bit slow or I, I don't seem as, as happy or as peppy as usual, it's because I'm honestly just tired. Um, I feel a little bit better today, the day that I'm recording this, um, but I still have a pretty bad cough and it's just really fatiguing to be honest. <laughs> it's really tiring to be coughing constantly and especially gets worse at night when I like lay down to go to bed of course and that means that I'm not sleeping very well so apologies for that but hopefully I do feel better very very soon um, and content can resume because I do have some new plans or pretty exciting plans rather that I am um, eager to kind of jump into so I'm just kind of letting myself rest taking it easy um, and not pushing it too too hard so so yeah hopefully it doesn't make that big of a difference in the video but just wanted to uh, to apologize if it does. Uh, getting back to what we are doing, we're gonna finish up either side of the habitat here. There's not too much more to do. Uh, we are almost, almost to the end. But what I'm doing here with these rocks is making a little bit of a uh, barrier that's not the, the wall, right? So I wanted it to end in kind of this rock work. And then I end up taking uh, the temperate 
tree, like the dead tree that doesn't have any leaves on it and tilting it on its side. So it looks a little bit nicer than just a plain wall. It's still meant to keep the rhinos back. So it's still meant to be like a blockade for them. It just looks like it's, it's a happy accident, I guess. Like it's, it's one of those things that like you look at it, like it's just a habitat decoration, but in reality, it actually does have a function in that it keeps the rhinos back from this kind of rock wall area and helps keep them contained a little bit. But also just like I said before in the, earlier in the video, because we can't really use a lot of trees in the habitat, um, it gives it a little bit more something rather than it just ending in plain dirt and rocks. Um, I do add a bunch more rocks here in front of the water area. And then we do get to add like grasses and low lying foliage and things like that. I do end up adding one tree in the habitat because I couldn't just, I it needed something. It needed something just to the left of the water. So towards the very end, um, I do add that in, but I also uh, make sure to surround it with kind of those log pillars uh, as if it would be a blockade, like a protection for the tree. So yes, it's growing there, but it also has protection from the rhino. Um, using this, this grass that came in the Africa pack is like, again one of my favorite pieces from the pack i say that about a lot but the africa pack might actually be my favorite dlc um very closely beating out australia because before africa australia was my favorite dlc um, but i really really like everything that came in the africa pack um that grass included and it's something so simple but it just it just adds a little bit of detail around where there might be it might be hard to you know um, groom that area, like to, to mow the lawn or to clip back the, the plants and stuff like that. Just kind of adding it around the edges where it might be hard um, for one, the rhinos to get to, but also the landscapers so that they can't quite trim it back. Um, and just kind of adds adds a little something. Um, we're also going to go through and add these pillars here in the front. As I was looking at the habitat, um, you know, I I don't know. I didn't think the rhinos would actually like try to jump down. I mean, I don't think they're very agile creatures. So I thought, you know, looking at the habitat, it's probably okay how it is. However, I just kind of wanted to add something that made it look like they weren't able to. So even if they tried, you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna fall off. They're not going to get down in the dry moat and hurt themselves or get stuck or something like that. I have no idea how realistic that is because I don't work with rhinos. I don't know a whole lot about them. Um, but that was just my thought process behind, you know, I need something here that makes it look like they're actually kept back. You know, maybe in a real zoo, they'd be pillars with like hot wire in between or something like that. But I just kind of felt like it needed something to suggest that they weren't able to, uh, to get down there. And then as you saw, just adding some more rocks all around the edges, kind of hiding up some corners and kind of more blending in things where it meets the ground. So it's not just this hard 90 degree angle of where the concrete hits the ground and then nothing happens. And then adding some gutters here. This actually might be, let me think for a second. It actually might be my very first time using the gutters as gutters. Um, I need to do this more because I actually really like the little detail that it adds to the building. Um, I really like how, um, well, one, they're recolorable. So I like how you can actually match them with the building, but it just, it just, I don't know what it adds is just, just a little something. And I really like it. Um, but yeah, it's my first time using the gutter pieces. So I think I need to do that more. Um, and then doing a little bit more of the detailing on top of the roof and things like that. But other than that, this habitat, is pretty much done. There's only a couple more minutes left before we jump into those end cinematics as always. I really do hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if you do enjoy this video, leaving a like on the video, a comment down below goes a long way in helping me out and I really do appreciate it. Not only the support from watching the videos, but like I said, the likes and the comments uh, really do mean a lot. We are getting very, very close to 9,000 subscribers and at 10,000 subscribers, I have um, a few exciting things planned. So can't wait to get there and I couldn't do it without you guys. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to follow me elsewhere, I am also on Twitter and Instagram and we do have a Discord. All of the links down below are in the comment section. Nope, not in the comment section. They're in the description bar. 
because I put them in the description for you guys for easy access. So if you're interested, you can check it out there. Thanks guys. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.